and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Salon. My name's Marshall Maguire. I'm the Director of Artistic Planning here at the Melbourne Recital Centre. And I think it's fair to say we're in for a bit of a treat tonight. None of us knows what's going to happen. And that includes the performers, which puts them in a very vulnerable position. Now, I'm happy to say that having done this before, there is some danger, but not much. Um, what we aim to do tonight is to reveal and to delight and to challenge and to see something that's rarely ever seen, and that is the first rehearsal of a piece. Often you're familiar with the open rehearsals where we'll hear the last rehearsal, which is kind of a safe way to do it because we all know what we're doing by that point. This quartet doesn't know what they're about to play tonight. I should introduce them to from left to right, Sarah Curro, Jenny Kafagi, Caridwin Davies, and Michelle Wood. Please make them welcome. This was a project that was conceived as part of Melbourne Festival a number of years ago as part of the Haydn for Everyone series where they had the crazy idea of performing all 68 Haydn string quartets over three years. And I'm pleased to say we, we did it. At the end of that series, I never wanted to hear Haydn again. But one of the things I recalled with great pleasure was this particular event, which was held at the Australian Tapestry Workshop, hence the unpicked part of it, um, sitting there surrounded by tapestries, but really looking at the detail of what goes into putting a string quartet together. So what will happen tonight is that I'm about to hand out some parts for a Haydn string quartet. Yep, take a deep breath, and I'll talk a little bit about the work. You'll see on the screens that we will have a score, and I'm, I'll be doing a bouncing ball around the scores. So those of you who can read the music will be able to follow. So if we say from bar 10 or bar 20 or wherever it is, or that forte bit, I'll try and wiggle my, my mouse cursor around so you can see what we're doing. I'll also, if it's okay, interrupt at certain points. If, if after 40 minutes you've only got through three bars, um, we might need to move it on because it can happen. Um, so, are we ready? Yep. Yep. I think we're ready. Come on, yep. hand right. it over. I'm going to hand it over now. <laughs> A lot of quartets in here. What I've just <laughs> handed over is the entire set of Opus 20 string quartets by Joseph Haydn. Haydn was known as the father of the string quartet, and it's this set of quartets that made him so famous. This comes from a key period in his life. It was the period from 1772, where he wrote the Farewell Symphony in the same period. And Haydn was the great master of the string quartet because for many years he was in the employ of the Esterhazes, and he, it was a, an estate outside Vienna in the countryside. There was nothing else to do, really, and the, his employers worked him very hard. We want entertainment, we want string quartets, we want symphonies, we want operas, give us stuff. So he wrote lots and lots of quartets, and he wrote them in isolation, and that's why they're unique, and that's why they have such an important uh, lineage. Everybody follows on from there. Um, Opus 20 number three is the work <laughs> we're going to look at. <laughs> It's a work in G minor. Uh, in my research, and I'm just going to refer to some of the words that have been used about this work. To give you a sense, it's being called astringent, nervy, bizarre, <coughs> eccentric. Someone said it, it, it finishes in an almost hysterical cri de coeur, can you believe it? Um, it's from a, another period known as the storm or drang period, the storm and stress period, this great sort of almost romantic period of grand emotions, of, of great sadness and of great joy, and it moves from one to the other seamlessly. I think we should start. You ready? Yep. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Please, <coughs> let's enjoy Opus 20, number three. Right, okay. Okay. <coughs> Step one. Tune. It's yeah. halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it how um, the first violinist always looks the most stressed when it's a hardened quartet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen worse. Oh, I've cool. seen better, but I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> we always look for the hardest part and get the speed from that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
so I'm going to stop being polite now because there's an audience <clears throat> and go, can we go from where I made that mistake? And usually everyone knows exactly where that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, where, where was... Okay, is that too fast, do we think? No. What, what's your hardest right. bit later on? Oh, my hardest bit is when you stopped playing. <laughs> 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 Second violinists don't get the tune that much, so I just panicked because she didn't have it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's about the size and don't of it, ask me it's because it's I'm I'm just happily going. Okay, great. Life right. of a bass player. <laughs> well, look, let's just start again. And yeah, if we had one hour to rehearse a whole quartet, um, we'd probably just smash through really quickly over and over. But for the purposes of this, it's probably important that we do try and rehearse properly. <laughs> so yeah, yep. start again. Mm -hmm. Sorry, on that beat, Sarah? Maybe we should 60. make a, a bit of a shock, you know, Haydn yep. and all his shocks. Yep. yep. And usually when we've got an hour to rehearse something for a concert, we've had a full day of something else. And that's, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> and a full life, program after program after program. So it's not like we're like, oh, let's have a Haydn rehearsal. <laughs> I'll bring the cakes, you bring the, <laughs> the chocolates, there'll be flowers in our beautiful room overlooking pasture land and so on. It's usually, we have to smash through this really quickly mm -hmm. and get it to a standard. So, I guess I better start <clears throat> playing better. Now, is that a bit too fast? Because I've got a bit like that coming up yeah, later, which is uh, quite complicated. For the first sort of reading through, yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, so do you want to go from there, which is yeah, bar? Sure. Mm -hmm. Or somewhere around there, well, you choose. Yeah, um, oh, uh, where's a good place? Just a few bars before would be fine. What, so like what bar number is or that? Even so do you want to go from your twenty six? Oh yeah, 20 twenty six. 27. Thanks, Marshall. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Upbeat. Upbeat. Yeah. Now I'm going to be less because I'm just playing B flat for half an hour here. So <laughs> um, I should stand up for this, but anyway. No, <laughs> no, no. There's, I'll shrink, just, don't there's, worry. there's lots of there's lots of interesting middly bits which don't necessarily happen in other Haydn quartets. So yeah, which I I would like to hear more of. I'll do that. Middle bits. Yep. <laughs> When you come in with your... Okay, that's being bit. polite. Yeah. I know, but it's cute. I like it. Yep. Got I it. I forgot we were supposed to take the edge off it a little bit. Too. Yeah, <laughs> speed-wise. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, talking yeah. To the <laughs> you're talking to the engine room who just launched straight into it. <laughs> Sorry. A little bit, let's see. <laughs> Yeah, yep. that's the whole point. Yep, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 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 43, 42, 41. 40, right, right on it. Yep. Yeah, let's do right on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. One and two and. <laughs> a little 
little, little faster? Yep. Yeah. Two, two. <laughs> And I've got a sticky bit before there as well. Mm. Which bit? Ah. That's right. That's the bar before? Is that uh, right? That was 40. Oh, okay. And you know, we spend so much time in, in orchestra with one and a half days rehearsal. If we don't write stuff in, I, personally, my memory brain is gone. I can't memorise anything anymore because I'm just continually reading new music all the time. So... If I don't write stuff in, I'll just keep making the same mistake. So I wrote it in. Oh, good. <laughs> Where are we going from? I, yeah, you did you want to do your sticky bit? Yes. So to speak. Um, the dun, 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 35? Sure. Yep. Charge of the next bar as well. Is it unnecessary thing. what I'm doing? Is no, it, no, no, it's no, a no. shock anyway. Why? Why would I take all that time? Well, I just don't think time. we, we don't need to take time. Like we either take time on before the before or after it. Yeah. So Marshall, what we're talking about is the second crotchet of sixty. If you could point that out, mm -hmm. that's sort of a shock that we want to bring out. So we could just play it straight in time, but you know sometimes we will make it longer or slow down before it, draw more attention to it. Um, but then if you draw t more attention to then something else afterwards, it's like walking down a garden path and someone telling you that you've got to look at all of the pretty flowers. So you're like, look at this one and look at this one. <laughs> and literally you get nowhere in like about five bars. So um, Yeah, good. So <laughs> let's, I Can think... Can we try, first we'll just try going straight, straight through. through. Nothing, pretend nothing's mm -hmm. happening and then bang. Okay, so um, you, are you forte on that beat or yeah, not? Yeah, on the second beat. On the second beat. So it's 50... 58? Mm. Yep. Oh, 52. 52. Oh, okay. 52. Mm -hmm. Fine. Fine. <laughs> like what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's best to just leave it alone. Just do what the composer <laughs> says. Yep. So... And there's no sign of crescendo into that for many of us. We right. all keep it really... Yeah, yeah, let's do it again. Same, 52. Mm -hmm. Bowie? D um, two ways. Dun, Actually, it's about three. Dun, 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 dun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that the cello one? No. Uh, yeah, dun, 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 or down, dun, 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 dun. So down. Tri tri bow? Tri bow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As it comes? Mm -hmm. With yep. two ups? Yep. yep. Okay. Way? If we're going to do that version, it feels like the version that we'd do if it was straight in time. And I wonder if, it, like, we're already pe pretty big. Yep whether we wanted to make a grander gesture of it to make it seem like it's actually louder than it is. Actually louder. Which is a yes. funny trick that sometimes you do. Like, there's only so much sound you can get out of an instrument. Yeah. And so sometimes in quartets, you sort of cheat. And if you want to make something fortissimo and you've been playing forte, taking a bit more time, mm. making a bigger gesture of it, actually orally can give the impression that it's louder than it is. And I would like to experiment with that. We could stand up. As Jenny said before. Yeah, totally. But we're, we're hooked up to these wires, so it might backfire. Yeah. <laughs> um, grand gesture as it comes bowing? As it... Or no, the, the do, let's do... Try down... Oh, down, down. down up. For, the, for the... And okay. a bit kind of... Yep. Elegando in the best uh, straight sense. Straight in or before or... J just yeah, just try it straight on. Okay. Oh, Ooh. no, I did the thing. Sorry. Oh. You know, I hit the thing. <laughs> 
Less of a grand gesture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> okay, ready? Same? Yep. I like that, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it in context if it works, though. Um, like, what, 61? Yep. Mm -hmm. You sleep mm -hmm. yet? <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy. Okay, we'll do... Sarah, yes. For non-string players, I've spent a lifetime wondering how long string players can keep talking about whether it's an up bow or a down bow. Oh, oh, You've okay. only got two choices. I one, mean, one how long things, can it take? Yeah, one, one of the things that also make us look great is if we're doing the same bowing. So, and, and togetherness is really important as well. If we're doing different bowings, we have the same music, we can't really be together mm. unless we're really clever. Plus, d each bow, each, like, being, well, certainly for me, here versus here gives a completely different feeling. Yeah. Mm. So, usually strong beats, as a cellist, I want it to be down here. Yeah. yeah. If I want something to be really light, as a general rule, <coughs> I'd want to be up mm. here. But that... Actually, then, you could have other conversations, whereas that feels great for me, but it feels completely yep. horrible for a violinist who's on a completely different angle, mm -hmm. and everything feels really, really different. So, um, occasionally, you'll get instances where a cellist will say, well, I want to do this bone because it works for the cello. Um, I don't get away with that in my quartet, usually. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's <laughs> why you have to moonlight with us. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so yeah, Ma um, Marshall's right in the sense that there are two choices, and we could spend days talking about what we're going to do. But ultimately, if we had to get this together really quickly, we'd be making choices based on what is the most um, winning gesture, I yeah. think, of every particular yep. phrase and what works for us. I think um, ultimately, as long as gestures like that that are the same and we're doing all the same thing mm. are the same, yep. that's great. What happens in between? Can we try another version? Okay. Can we do bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum again, but do a bit holding it up at the end. Okay. Dun, 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 that okay. kind of thing. Yep. Yep. I like that too. <laughs> in, in, at the end of the day, you've just got to choose one and move on. So mm. we'll go back to 61. Yep. Actually, and do that. Put the whole thing in. Let's do 52 again. 52, <laughs> Marshall. And um, vote down, down, up, down. Who wants to do that one? I don't actually care. Should we just decide? I liked the last one. You like, oh, the, last like the last one? one. Okay, yeah. let's do the last one. Dun, 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 bum, bum. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 52. in my part. So once I'd finished the weird stuff, could we just have a moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. absolutely. Regroup sort of thing. Yep. This is actually how I talk in rehearsals. Yep. Those of um, you who are sniggering. <laughs> strong beat down, weak beat up. Uh -huh. So in other words, 73 on an yep. up, mm -hmm. 75 on a down. Yep. Yeah, and what about the pin snow before that? Um, Should we just keep that on a down? Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So all the little interjections that happen with the other voices whilst the first violinist is going off on their own um, jazz odyssey. Um, <laughs> that bit. Um, it's funny, the gesture gives so much in Haydn that, um, I mean, he's, he's essentially a bit of a jokester. So all of this sort of stuff, the little interjections, the making it feel like it's not necessarily on the right beat, which mm -hmm. even for us feels a bit strange. Knowing kind of whether we mm. interject like that yeah, or yeah. interject mm, like yeah. as a more definite thing, that's all part of the... Um, the comedy of it, I guess. Yeah, and it also helps whoever's playing the weird stuff. It helps to, to be easier. It, it's yeah, well, it, it, it the accompaniment is doing do. the phrasing mm. that you've decided on. You just end up playing it automatically. It's incredible effect when when everyone's doing that. Um, anyway. And Marshall, point, could you point out the little bit I'm talking about? 72, 71. 
those six bars, he's turned it into three in a bar instead of two. So that's what Michelle was sort of referring to. Um, all of a sudden, like as a listener, you don't quite know, it, it doesn't feel as yum, bum, bum, yeah, bum, you, bum, 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 bum. So all of a sudden it's something slightly different. Yeah, so, um, that's right. Anyway, should we try? I'll do 67. <coughs> Just yep. remind the second violinist which volume we decided on. Down, up, oh, yeah, down, down, up, up. up. Thanks. Down. <laughs> do you like my singing? Oh, it's <coughs> really pretty. <laughs> All right, so 67. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. what I was expecting. No. Maybe you, do you want to bring it out a little bit or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think we should be like that. Da -da -da -bum 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 -bum. That one be less because yeah. we're all right. doing the same thing. It's the problem with Haydn that all of a sudden he'll write us in unison and it sounds like we're louder than we are, yeah. but actually it's just because everyone's playing the same thing for a, for yep. a moment. Is that um, the same cadence as it was in 60? Um, is 60 before your the mm. Yeah, interrupted. So no, but the it's first not, time it's we not the... Yeah. No, not your cadence, the Our one, one we played oh, before. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep. So, so um, the first time we came away from it, didn't we, before the chord, yes. and this mm -hmm. time we'll go in. Yes, it. yes. Yeah, gorgeous. Okay. Da -da -da -dum -bum. How about 80, yep. 7, 70, you know that loud bit? Forte? Yep. Sorry, Marshall, 77. <laughs> Okay. Can we like yep. way come away yeah. into the double bar? Yep. yep. Um, and because we're coming up for that interrupted cadence in 84 to 85, the, uh, yep. the, yep. can we make that less? Is, is it, where's everyone else's forte in that? Second quaver of 87. Yeah, so, so like if we make that smaller, so then the forte is yep. more obvious. Because yeah. otherwise it just sounds like we're doing a crescendo. Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad thing, but yeah. Actually, it's an interesting thing. Um, Haydn's the parts that exist for these quartets now. Yeah, what's um, this edition? I don't even notice. Well, there's so many different editions, and Heating most edition. of them exist because of um, essentially parts that existed that players had, and quartets had written on. There's nothing. There's no particular um, ur text. So, like exactly what. Um, Haydn wrote that really exists. This is a close one because it's Peter's. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one, more, probably more recent, I think. Um, but there's all sorts that exist. Nothing's right oh, okay. necessarily. Right. So this is kind of someone's version of it. So we can kind of make up. It's a choose your own adventure, I think. <sighs> Which is lovely. It's a relief. So can I just <laughs> point out too, it's a good point because I was l listening to you talking and thinking, oh, it's not on my score. Uh, exactly. So if you're confused, if it says crescendo in the score for those who are following it, and Michelle's saying, let's diminuendo there, absolutely cool. Yeah. Yep. Just two different versions, um, which sometimes differ. Look, I mean, it, and it's, it's one of those things that, like, we could be playing Beethoven, and I mean, uh, things that are later on, you have more of an idea of exactly what the composer wrote back this early, I think. Yeah, they became absolute control freaks over what musicians were allowed to do and not allowed to do. Wagner is a really good example of that. Mi micromanaging every bar, writing mm. everything in yep. that he wanted pretty much less freedom when you're playing the later composers. But yeah, we can we can do what we want here. So I, li I like to think that we've got, you know, yeah, free reign, yeah. as it were. So coming away towards the, the double bar and just more mm -hmm. on the... Can we just put some bowing in? Because maybe after we've just rehearsed this, we can play through the whole first half. Yeah, first half. Yep. I've just got to put in some bowings with Jenny. So 44. Did we do? Miss your question. At 79. At 79. Yeah, we're doing the print. I come yeah, in. Yeah. How, how do you how do you get out yeah, of that? Yeah, we're gonna keep the studio up down. Yes, keep down. Oh, you do just do You have a thing. I can. Yeah, it's a down. Oh, suggestion. No. Yeah, I don't know what I was just doing. How do you? 
Are you on an up for that? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Let's do what we were doing. And then, did we just do another up yeah. there? Yeah. And just as it comes. Yeah, just cool. as it comes. Will we keep doing a slow? Guaranteed if I'm playing a yeah, style like that, I won't be able to I get think out so. of it. <laughs> oh, easily. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I can't remember. It's probably because I'm messing up the bit before. This is very realistic, by the way. Usually, like, split into factions. Yep. These guys usually have a lot more stuff together. Oh, An 87, just quickly. Yes. Very minor detail, but so the yep. forte, you're doing a down. We, can we try that on an up? So, um... <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, so just one verse. No, not yep. at all. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Good. We're slur? Fine. No slur. And you're on a down for that forte slur. What slur? What? That one. We're just keeping that? Yeah, keep that one. Good. Why isn't it working out now? <laughs> I think we were breaking that slur before. No. <laughs> and this is where I think to myself, other people are going to see concerts and ha having a drink on a Friday night <laughs> and we're, we're just constantly working and thinking about music. <sighs> um, and then I think, someone else decide. What should we do, Let's, Jenny? Um, oh, you want to put a slur in there, maybe? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's just break that one. Break that one. Yeah, good yeah. one. Solved. Sounds like you're breaking rules, but actually... <laughs> <laughs> breaking yeah. slurs. We're from... Yes, boom. Okay, good. We've got it. Solution. <laughs> Name your bar. Or are we doing are a run for the thing? Not, yeah, do we have anything else to say? Oh, yeah, are we that? doing three ups on that one? Oh, yeah, let's do three, three ups. Da, 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 so if you have three quavers, and a down, just and a finishing on an up or down? Da, 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 da. Down. down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready to play the first half of this movement. It really does. <laughs> it seems very chaotic at first, and then it all just comes together. So, what else do we need to do now? How much time have we got? So, okay, we're at the halfway point. Maybe we should move to another movement. Let's yep. have yeah, a look. just for interest's sake. Yeah. Let's see. Can we not do the minuet? Okay. Yep. I feel like okay. I'm at a wedding gig. Well, <laughs> my part looks really interesting. Oh, fantastic. Of, of which, the third movement? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Good. Generally, Haydn cello parts are um, sparser dun, dun, than dun, their count. Dun, 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 well, yeah, exactly. I mean, gen we've well, very much know. functioned <laughs> as a bass line. Um, <laughs> but this looks actually, and I, I think, um, a little bit more interesting than a lot of other Haydn cello parts. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. 
I've got some semi-quavers too. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah. much it. It's Fortunate. defined by have I got semi-quavers <laughs> and I have semi-quavers. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you... Um, do you start with something interesting? Or I'm not Slow. super interesting. So, and a B natural, which I was not going to play, actually, because <laughs> it was in G minor. G minor. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Lucky there's no one here watching us rehearse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Disaster. Um, yeah, first rule, you got, man, first rule of sight reading, <laughs> look at the keys in your chart. You've got three crutches. I'm just good. Crutches. It's going to set it. hard so I'm going to stop. Oh sure. Um, <laughs> bar four I've got a thing like that with a line through it plus uh, a, a poggiatura before it. Mm. Can you all help me interpret uh. that please? Da -dum, ba -da -da -dum. So the notes are ba -da -dum, and then it's yeah so right? that speaks to me. Okay. You can't show that close up or anything? Here it's written as a trill. Ooh. Oh. Oh, so. Oh. Okay. Oh. And, the, okay, so this is another example. Imagine all the parts that ever existed for this particular quartet. <laughs> and so basically one violinist is, so Haydn clearly wanted, or something. maybe, an ornament. Yeah. He might not have even actually written it. Yeah. It might have been something that a player just thought, oh, well, this sounds nice, I might add it, because back in, yeah, that time would have been assumed that ornamenting you would do that. was yeah. just something that you just do. Um, but the way that you do it is, of course, very individual to every person. So now we've got okay, at least one score in one part that is written differently. Yeah. Yep. So now Imagine Sarah has to get Sarah has the agony of choice as to what she gets to improvise. I'm okay <laughs> with choice. I'll just do what I want. And and also on that topic of of, of improvising, I've just got three straight crotchets in the first bar, as you can see. And then, da, 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 da. now, to me, that sounds a bit sparse. And if I was in a wedding gig, I would be ornamenting for my own fun and to practice ornamenting. But it's not really done in the um, mainstream of quartet playing. They just stick to the part and agonise over what did Haydn mean here and there. But um, Marshall could shed a bit of light on that. Back in those days, there was ornamenting pretty much all the time. Because yes. these composers worked very closely with performers, it very much was an individual taste thing. So yep. as, as you've said already, one performer's trill might be another person's turn mm. or it might mm. be another person's, I'll play it straight today because I'm not having a great day and I don't feel like making a trill <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah. I, I mean, it really is about that. And that's where the, some of the difficulty and some of the joy comes in interpreting this music because the notes are there to read, but the interpretation of it is endless. Mm. Yep. And I can guarantee yeah. if we had a a different group of people here tomorrow looking at the same quartet. It would yeah. be a very different discussion, a very different yep. set of ornaments. Mm. And that's what still feels new and fun and, and um, that it shouldn't just be put at the bottom of the drawer and never played again because we can still make something 
something of it. And it's a case often, sometimes, if, like, I mean, there can be such a thing as over-ornamenting. It's kind of, what's the phrase? Like, gilding the lily? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful as it is. It sometimes doesn't need lots of ornaments yeah. to be any more beautiful. It's yeah. just, you know, yeah, whatever feels nice. Yeah, simple can sometimes be the best as well. There's also a long way to go. I mean, yeah, you, you maybe should have this movie is good. Forever. Looks like it's going Sarah, to Sarah, can I point out yeah. one other little thing, too? Yep. Just because I've, I've just noticed it myself, seeing it for the first time. This... Little bar here, bar three. Da, da, da. Oh, there's my cold voice coming out. Never sing in public. <laughs> yeah. Could you play that? And could you play bar 11? Uh, 13, 12, oh, yeah. 11. Oh, yeah, right. So it's the same figure down an octave, but in the last beat, he's expanded that to become quite different. So he's already, he's sort of written in. A very Some specific rhythmic development there. of yeah. the yeah. Of and the is your the lower version just da 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 yum da da? No, it's oh, actually da da dum ba yeah. dum. Yeah. Mm. Have you got that there too? That's Marshall? right. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. So you'll all know that I didn't play that exactly right. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Try? Let's see. Yep. It says forte at the beginning. Then nothing till a piano in bar twenty one. Yeah. Mine's mm. in brackets. Mine's which in brackets too. That. Okay. You know, someone had a good idea at one point and then it wasn't confused. <laughs> didn't yeah, rub it out. out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, let's... Um, well, let's not start Forte in the spirit of we can do what we want. Hmm. Well, it's really... It's kind of... It's got to me a bit of a church music vibe yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very choral yeah. and very... Um, it sounds like four voices yeah. as opposed yep. to four string mm -hmm. instruments. So Definitely. Maybe we can and go an for argument that. for keeping it clean. Yeah. You got Marshall trill, trills again or turn? Yeah. Well, that's easier. Do that. It's so the top one, the downbeat. That's yeah, cool. the top yeah. one's the downbeat. Top. When Super. you turn into me, the, the bass line. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, this is b one of the more interesting hide and cello parts I've ever played. Um, purely because I all of a sudden become a viola, mm -hmm. and Kerry mm. becomes a cello mm -hmm. about half. Well, when I was busy doing my semi quaver thing before, which mm. is just really cool. I love the fact that he. Like, I don't know, it's just, un yeah. it's unusual, yeah. like, that I would be higher than you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe I should be softer at that point. Um, maybe 19. 19, that's yep. Right, that spot. So this spot that we're playing, <laughs> Carrot is now doing my job and I'm doing Carrot's job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Two, and I'll be one, softer seven, doing it. Nine. Yeah.
Just me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I've had that second violin moment. I just I got some out. serious air up there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Tenercliffe. This is really nice. Thanks, Marshall. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dom. Whereabouts? Oh, we have a nice little oh. doozy too. Can we play 33 again? 30. Yep, Karen, one yep. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. should be less. Uh, what often happens is the first violin thinks they've always got the tune, and that's probably right 40% of the time. So it's really important that the other players speak up and say, do you have the tune there? I think <laughs> I've got the tune. <laughs> or whatever, you know. It's just important that the first violin stops doing that. <laughs> Occasionally, maybe does that. Oh. <laughs> and it happens twice too, so maybe oh, we can. Oh, whoops. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> boss. Yeah. Did you want to. Oh. 30. Is that 33? 30, yep. Uh, 33 and 34? Yeah, 33 and 34. Yep. Should we do more of the. F mm. Which way? Whatever. Around? Hey, take me on an adventure. Okay. Yeah, totally. Bar number? Buckle up. All right. Um, bar, <laughs> bar 29. Uh, bar 30. Yep. Okay. been something that would have happened? Yeah, maybe. I wonder. I mean, as in it would have happened. Yeah. Mm. Probably not. But okay, the, the other option would be, okay, playing it straight would be the... Phrasing it differently. Yeah, phrasing so it differently. So if it's wonky, honky, tonk fingering, then you'd play it differently than... Yeah. I like that though. That's kind of cool. Sarah, can I, the voice from afar, can I clarify what we're talking about? Because you're actually talking about playing on an open string there, aren't you? Uh, 41 by yeah. 41, it, it, there's a printed fingering. It's in the score too. That's mm. two weird. open, two open, which, which suggests two different strings for the same note. Because the, the other way to is do it is just on the same string. Uh, which so would be Reminds me of something that early 20th century players would put in, actually, more likely. Because what else is happening in beat one and two of 41? I don't consider my part very important mm -hmm. at that moment. Well, you're, you're it. Yeah. I'm it? Yeah. You're just holding a note? Nothing. Like, we're actually not playing. Because I, I would... So if you, if you see the bar, there's that quarter then, which is more interesting than... Know. Well, that's the thing. It's almost folk music, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Almost. Yeah. So, anyway, the third beat's more interesting. So, uh, let's do. Um, ba -ba. You know, I've got that thing by myself. Da -da 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 yep. Yep. Da is bar forty. Okay. So, can we try doing down up for these entries? Oh, sure. Just oh, yeah, please, because it, it yeah, it, like, it's it's I'm, I'm, I'm under a slur, but I'm going to, oh. I'm going to break my slur Fine. for you. Oh, you don't have to do that. Like <laughs> no, um, that's fine. Some people don't break their slurs for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at me My go. brother is one of those <laughs> oh, yeah, people. Well, Will not break a composer's slur. slur. Oh, you have slurs. Maybe yeah. I should add a slur for you. I'll feel special later. We'll do it at the end. We'll see what it sounds like. Uh... So from so there, upbeat and to I'll do upbeat to 40. Mm. Uh, okay. 40. Yeah. 
again, we, we should, Very out of unusual. respect to the rarity of the occasion, <laughs> yeah, I know, right. period, back away. Mm. Now, it's not my fault this time. I've got four bars for us. Ironically, blamed. he's written forte for me again. <laughs> me too. That's Without I mean. brackets. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, that's just, no, that's mean. I'm, just because, actually, this is a really yeah, fun thing. So you have four individuals in a quartet, and someone will see forte and go, well, I'm going to play it forte. And they're probably not going to have the tune. And mm. actually, by me playing to balance with Kerrid's part, I won't be playing my version of forte mm. at all. I'll be playing mezzo piano plus, maybe, yeah. mezzo forte. But you'd be surprised. That's the kind of trade-off. So you've got something printed, and there are a lot of people who'd be going, but I've got but this. But I've got forte. And yep. you will get into arguments with people about the fact that they have forte. That must seem tune. so ridiculous to other people sometimes that we can get into arguments about stuff like that. Yeah. But and it will take a long time too. It's, mm. it yeah. wouldn't happen with us, I don't think. No, but sometimes you can get people that, like, you know, they're very, they see something and they, they absolutely strongly believe it. And yeah. part of the beauty of being in a chamber ensemble, and particularly one that, you know, goes for a long time, is realising that the first thing you've got to do when you sit down is realise that there's the possibility that you may be wrong and that <laughs> someone else might have an, a, better, a better version of um, yeah. what you might think to be the case. So, yeah. well, that being said, I'm, go I'm going to listen to Carrot's tune and be a nice little wallflower. <laughs> Exciting part, and no, I've got oh, some. Sorry, <laughs> I'm in tenor club no, again, so I'm happy. Um, <laughs> that progression was astounding. It's so beautiful. I mean, it's, it, he, it's just no. extraordinary music. Like I'm. It was a shock that one. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I was shocked by that one. I but wasn't expecting it. I don't know. It's just, I, it, just how four voices can sound just that nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not, you know, okay, first rehearsal. You were good, but, right? No, 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 it's just, it's just such great music. I'm, I, I, yeah. I still get surprised by um, Haydn's quartets. No, that's probably worth doing again. And Marshall, do you have bars like 50? On, on my note, there's the, the Kyle. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, this little symbol here, I, well, I don't know if you can see it. it I've like got a, nothing on that note, actually. Oh, you've got part. nothing no. on that note. Yeah. Huh. How about 65? That looks like a, a suspiciously uh, Kyle-less score. Nothing. We oh, should explain okay. what we're talking about. Yes. On the top of one of the notes, it kind of looks, uh, to some of my students, we call them carrots. Yeah. It looks like a little carrot, like a coloured-in carrot, and it can imply separation, shortness. Some people believe it was like a staccato, so meaning a short note. Yeah, it depends on the composer, how you interpret yeah. it. Um, also, it depends on the person, how you interpret it. Like, there's... Yeah. But, but Beethoven put them so that you wouldn't phrase, you wouldn't make a sort of nice phrase, you'd play every note equally. So for instance, like I've got two Kyles in bar 69 written in my part, and essentially it's the difference between me going like that, which at the time might have been, you would expect to play um, very smoothly between notes, but instead it means, to, or my version of it would be, that yeah, I have to sure. separate the two yeah. of them. So 
And then you ask, well, why, why didn't he just write a dot? But dots were a new thing as well, like the short staccato mark. I mean, these bows weren't even out yet. Right. So, yeah, it's all those considerations that our generation, I feel, has had um, early 20th century training plus early music, you know, gut strings, mm. phrasing. Um, so I think we're really lucky we can... Oh, can we just do an example of what... Yeah. Can we play early 20th century Vibrato City kind of for the oh. opening and quite slow? Yeah, to uh, show the, opening the, the opening or the opening of the second half? Opening of... Opening. Oh, no, the, the opening. Yeah. So our two ways we've been trained, which inform what we do all the time, this is the kind of old school way, yep. let's say, and quite slow and, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's that version, and the version that we're sort of playing a little bit lighter now. So we can skip to the second um, part with our new. We have ten minutes to go. Yeah, okay. thanks. Awesome. Okay. Jenny wants to get to us. No, no, it's fine. I don't. No, 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 actually, no, no, this is a perfect example. Maybe if we go from fifty-five. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Because oh, yeah. um, yep. if we have a listen, so the part here from memory is really stagnant. So Sarah all of a sudden has these semiquavers that sort of meander around and. The part, can we just play our part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. This is really interesting. So, um, 55. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, in terms of left hand, hmm. um, turning up, up according to interest of individual parts, maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Like, so I guess um, it's a chorale, essentially, that's happening underneath Sarah. So what I was just implying is that maybe to bring something out, so rather than get louder and disturb what Sarah's doing, what we can do is essentially, I say switch on our left hand, but it basically means just add vibrato. So... So all of a sudden, it colours the note in a different way rather than us just staying very, static, very plain yeah. and static yeah. underneath, which has its own beauty. But yep. And if they work that out, again, it makes my job easy. I just sort of follow what they're doing, uh, phrasing-wise and dynamics. So Should we go from there? Yeah. Like right on? Mm -hmm.
nice, isn't it? Wow. Mm. It's really beautiful. That is just the best second violin part ever. <laughs> it's so it's cool. pretty fun. I'm yeah. <laughs> I got a tune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. It's starting to make me think I don't think he ornamented any of the beginning yes, at all because yeah. it just gets so yeah. flowery yep. and yep. Yep. Yeah. That's and right. it's funny, and looking back on it now that we've played the whole thing, it makes you see the start very differently. Like, there's, yeah. there's great things about, like, the first time that you read through something because you're surprised by a harmony or something in a really good way, mm. and you can never quite... You always then spend the rest of the time trying to recapture that, yeah. like, really, <clears throat> oh, my goodness, that was amazing sort of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But then... Like, also having got, gone through now, there are things that I would do differently at the start yep, because yeah. there's a real sort of trajectory of mm -hmm. the whole movement that you want to actually just tell that big story. Mm. And if you kind of give the game away too early, it sort of takes away from it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and discussion is always really important because, as Michelle said before, everybody has a separate set of things to bring. And, and some of the most unsuccessful things I've ever done is when I have assumed that I was the boss, you know, when I was a student or whatever. I'm first violin, you know, I'm going to dictate everything. And it's just awful. It's so much better if everybody <laughs> talks about it. You know. Are we out I think that's a time? very beautiful way to finish. Well, yeah. I think that, that image of understanding the beginning better once you've reached the end is yeah. really special. The other thing to bear in mind is that, of course, you don't have a score. So those moments of surprise are genuine surprise for yeah. you because you yeah. don't know what's, what's going to happen. Yep. We're enormously grateful for you oh. opening up this evening for us. I think I've learned a lot. I'm glad you love Opus 20 Number 3 as much as I do. What an extraordinary piece. Good yeah. choice. Yeah. And thank I hope it much. makes you want to explore the rest. Please thank Sarah, Jenny, Crudwin and Michelle. Thank you. And thank you all so much for coming to this first musical explorations of the year. I love these sessions. I love getting under the meaning of the music. The next session we've got in the series is actually going to be run by one of the acousticians who designed this room, Cameron Huff from Arup, and he's going to be working with another string quartet to um, look at how this room changes depending on how things are played. So that's happening in June. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you for coming and supporting us all. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>